Today on TV Box Stop, I feature another TV Box release from the Vankyo line of TV Boxes. In their last TV Box release they launched the Matrix Box X95 Plus TV Box, built on the S905Y2 CPU that performed quite well. Today they have launched yet another model and it's the updated version of the Matrix Box called the Matrix Box X95 Max, built on the S905X2 chipset. We have seen the S905X2 in action in various boxes, and today we will see if Vankyo's new release is a box worthy of our attention. That's coming up next. So we're back, and to get started, let's have a look at the box that it's shipped in followed by a quick unboxing. So Vankyo has maintained their distinctive bright orange color of the Matrix Box brand with some professional labeling. However, they haven't listed any hardware specs anywhere on the box, so I will leave that bit of information for the system and hardware information segment. So without further ado, I will do a quick unboxing. So in the box you have the usual stuff. You get the Vankyo X95 Max TV box itself. You get this infrared remote. It's a standard remote and it may come in handy especially if the box has features on the launcher only the remote can control, but as an advanced user, you may want to consider using a wireless air mouse for easier navigation. You get one HDMI cable. A 5 volts 2 amps power adapter. And a user's manual. Let's take a look at its design and what ports we have on this box. The body is made of plastic, with the Vankyo logo printed to the top. To the rear of the box. You have one HDMI port. One Ethernet LAN port. One optical audio port. One audio video port and a DC power input jack. To one side, you have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0, and a microSD card reader. It's blank to the other side. To the front, you have an LED clock display. And below the box, you have some ventilation holes. I will now set this up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm all set, and here I am at the first launch of the Android 9 operating system. You will see the Vankyo boot up animation followed by a quick setup wizard. Once completed, you are taken to the launcher. So this is the launcher running on Android 9 Pi operating system. This launcher is exactly the same as the launcher in my previous video, that features horizontal scrolling panels with the ability to rearrange the app shortcuts by long pressing on the OK button on a selected app, and using the direction keys to reposition the shortcut to where you want, which is a nice feature. It also features the same custom shortcuts bar to the top where you can add shortcuts by clicking on the add button. You also have the option to rearrange the shortcuts the same as you have in the apps section. The one-click memory cleanup button is also available for killing apps running in the background and freeing up system resources. In similar fashion, the launcher also comes with a navigation bar for multitasking and easy navigating to the home screen. There is the same status bar to the top, but it is not a full status bar with system controls, it's more of a notification bar. In the settings area under advanced settings you have the following options. 4K resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision, with the option to set priority between video and graphics. Audio Settings, with the option to select the audio output medium. You have a root access switch. 
you have picture mode options. and HDMI CEC control options. In the device preference area you have your standard system options and an additional option to select an array of advanced Dolby Audio options including Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio settings. In the apps section, they have included a combination of system and media apps, casting apps, and streaming apps. These include the AirScreen app, App Installer, Chrome Browser, Cast Play for TV, the Cetus Play app, two set of file browsers, Kodi Add-ons Installer, Mobdro, Movie Player, Netflix, the Google Play Store, Amazon Prime Video, the TV App Store, TVMC which is a custom Kodi build, and YouTube. I will now install some additional apps needed to complete my review. As in my last video, on this launcher I recommend that under the advanced settings display settings, you disable the SDR to HDR option, as it over brightens the screen color creating a blurry effect. Disabling this option results in richer brighter colors. You should also enable Dolby Vision, for high quality Dolby HDR video playback. To begin testing its features and capabilities I will first check to see if alternative launchers can work on this box. I installed the EV launcher and it works with drag and drop features and pop-up app menus. I will now check to see if screen rotation works on this box, given that it's a different box running the same launcher. The results are the same as in my previous video. Screen rotation does not work on this launcher. I will now check the root access information and the root switch feature. It shows that the box is currently rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. With the root switch turned off, it now shows that the box is not rooted. Just be mindful that you have to restart the box for the root setting to take effect. Also, I caution all users not to update the Super User app, as it will put the box into a permanent boot loop that can only be fixed by flashing with a stock or updated firmware. And now a look at its DRM information. It shows that it has Google Widevine Level 3 and no HDCP protection. This means that Netflix and Amazon Prime Video will only show in standard 480p quality. It will require this box and any other box to be not rooted, running on a certified version of Android TV OS, along with Google Widevine Level 1 with HDCP protection for the box to have the digital rights to show premium streaming services like Netflix in HD and 4K quality. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Droid Logic, and the model is the X95 Max. It comes with 4GB of DDR4 RAM, and 32GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder. The Bluetooth version is 4.1, indicated by the 4 Plus, and I will connect a device to this later in the video. The CPU is the Quad-Core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU running up to 1.7GHz in 32-bit mode. The CPU is the Mlogic S905X2, and it is configured with 32-bit ABIs. The display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and open GLES version 3.2 which is really good for gaming. Under network, it shows that the box has dual band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the box is running on Android 9 operating system, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box is running between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius under normal operation, and we will monitor to see how high it increases during treaty gaming. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos, and I will test its Dolby features in a moment. 
and that's it for system and hardware information, and let's see how it does in the benchmark segment and where it fits on the rankings chart. First, I show the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speed. The results show that the X95 Max has a RAM copy speed of 3,397 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 80 megabytes per second and a write speed of 72. This is a good score, consistent with other S905X2 boxes. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results show the exact same results as in my last video, where on my 60 megabytes package, the X95 Max has maximum download speed only on the 5 GHz band. The 2.4 band fell slightly below the maximum speed by 28%. And the LAN port fell even further by 68%. This means for maximum internet speed use the 5 GHz band. I now show the results of the Antutu benchmark, the score that I use to reference boxes on my chart. The Vankyo X95 Max got a score of 60,357. And this is a very good score, similar to my last TV box, and we will see how it places on my chart. The CPU benchmark shows that the box got a Geekbench 4 score of 747 single-core, and 2126 multi-core. Another good score by the X95 Max, and it's very close to the score in my last video but slightly higher, and this score is consistent when compared to similar M-Logic boxes. The final score is the Ice Storm Extreme and the Slingshot GPU Graphics benchmark. The Vankyo X95 Max got a score of 5,493 in the Ice Storm Extreme, and 526 in the Slingshot Test. So these results came really close to the last box I reviewed but came out on top by mere single digits. It should perform well in some Android games which I will try in a moment. But before I proceed, let's see where it placed on my chart. So after updating the scores. Vankyo's X95 Max placed at number 8 in reference to Antutu scores, beating boxes like the B-Link GT1 Mini and Pendu's X10 Max from my last video which is pretty good for this box, placing it among the top 10 TV boxes for 2019. You can find this chart on my website in full spreadsheet format, where you can interact with it and compare different scores, see the link in the description area. But these are just scores. I will now put it through some further tests and we will see if the scores reflects its true performance in 4K video playback in Treaty Gaming. Let's go to that now. So to start the entertainment segment I will start with Netflix. Netflix comes pre-installed on the box, and it could be uninstalled and you can install whatever version you want. However, you cannot install it from the Google Play Store. Due to the lack of required DRM support, it can only show in standard 480p quality. Also the stock remote does not navigate its main menu, with the stock direction keys, you will have to use an air mouse for this. The mouse mode on the stock remote will work to select and play a movie from the main menu, but that can be very tedious to maneuver. However, once you are inside a movie selection the remote navigates fine. Amazon Prime Video comes pre-installed on the box, but due to my location along with inadequate DRM support, Amazon Prime Video also shows in standard quality. The Android TV version of YouTube also comes pre-installed on the box and it shows in 4K quality. I will now play some 4K video samples. I recommend for playing 4K videos you use the VLC player, and in the settings area set hardware acceleration to full acceleration, and in the audio settings select the checkbox to enable digital audio pass-through. The VLC player is one of the few players that can play Dolby and DTS audio.
welcome to the inside of the So the 4K samples all played ok, the box outputs HDR display quality as the HDR icon showed up many times during the playback on the TV itself. It can play MKV, TS, and MP4 formats without issues. I will now test for Dolby Audio and DTS surround sound features. Welcome to the inside of your head. So this test shows that Dolby Audio and DTS surround sound pass-through actually works. The AirScreen app and the Cast Play app works the same as in my previous video. These two apps allow you to remotely control and cast media to the box via your mobile device, whether Android or AirPlay device. For those interested in expandable storage, I connected a 2TB hard drive via external USB cable, and the box was able to read and write to the drive. I was also able to format the entire drive as shared internal storage which massively increases your storage options. For my final demonstration I will play some Android games to test the box's 3D graphics rendering and gamepad keymapping capabilities. Wasn't very confident defending, but it's done the job. Chance for him. Got to be. Barcelona have scored here. Good game this, because Barcelona aren't having it all their own way, although they do lead. It's uh, quite an even contest. It's going to be a goal, surely. Oh, he made a good decision coming out to make the save.
The gaming performance of the box is really good as expected. The graphics rendering is smooth and of a high quality. The Octopus Keymapping app works great on this box, and the box does not overheat during gaming. In summary, Bankio has done it again, delivering another solid Android 4K TV box. The launcher has most of the features required for a great TV box experience. It has great features like the navigation bar and status bar, the root switch in the settings area, the ability to rearrange apps on the launcher, Dolby Vision, HDR display, DTS audio pass-through, good 4K video playback, high benchmark scores, and high-quality 3D gaming with keymapping capability. To identify some cons with this box. The 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi BAN in the LAN port has low bandwidth speeds. Screen rotation does not work. And Netflix and Amazon Prime plays in standard quality. So this brings to an end my review of the Vankio X95 Max TV box. If you would like to purchase this box or need more information, see the link in the description area directly below this video where you can get a $5 coupon off the regular price. Thanks for watching. If you like this video give it the thumbs up. If you know someone who is looking for a great TV box then share it with them, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell, to be notified of my next video release, and see you in the next one.